Hey, what's up guys? This is Eek, um, and today I want to show you um, how to achieve some funkiness for all your leads and your chords and stuff. Um, and it all kind of like revolves around one central filtering thing. So let me show you some sounds. I have four sounds. I'll show you each. Uh, I'll show you each of them. Um, how I got there, but it's all really easy, and it's just this is just the way to start you out. This is not it's for sure a funky way to do things, but it's just the way to yeah start you out. And sorry, I've been missing lately. I've just been doing activities with friends and families and stuff. Okay, sorry. Anyway. Here's what I got. I'll play, I guess I'll play the things I want to show you. I'll put it with some music. So I guess I'll talk about the bass too. Um, let's just go down the line. Uh, drums. I wanted some sweet ass drums, like f retro funky drums. And I noticed uh, on Black Octavist Sound, um, someone said there are some drums that are free. I forget who and I forget what. So never mind. <laughs> Uh, so on a Black Octopus, uh, new, uh, no, no, new Cisco, what do you call them, a televisor, released a sample pack. They have a bunch of like just random like funky snippets of songs and random loops and stuff. They have the drums too. And I wanted that classic, awesome, disco-y, new disco sound. With that retro snare and that kick. And um, so they have a bunch of cool stuff. There's my drums with that. Um, yeah. I just kind of made this like hi hat pattern. And that's it with the drums. Um, okay, these. These are like the most basic thing you can do. It makes things funky. Um, I need a fucking mo new monitor. Or. A new computer in general. Anyway, this is a Harmer um, Unison. It's on the sharper side with the pitch. Uh, I'm compressing it a little bit. But the main idea is to take a low pass of your choosings. Well, they only have this classic. and You can make like, any kind of custom low passy thing if you want to. But anyway, uh, the filter frequency starts high and it goes... It goes down. And it kind of makes that noise. Um, and I put the resonance up a little bit. Actually, I did something weird with the resonance. I kind of messed with the... The resonance setting. So, yeah, I messed with that. And you can change like the width and armor and everything. Might get cooler things, but you have to you have to like put the filter. I always do it like halfway, and then I adjust the where the frequency starts and ends. Because if you do it too low, it's like too sharp. You want like a little bit of tail. According to what you want for your song. So that's much resonance. I always try to just make it around where, uh, as long as uh, where the notes end, and try to make it like the tail of the note, obviously, come through. Um, but these chords are just like my basic shitty chords that I always do. Always have like, yeah. You can just pause this, pause the video and copy them if you want. 
Um, but the bass. Sometimes when the, you mess with the pitch, it like it leans to like one side or the other, and the panning. But um, this is uh the same thing, obviously in bass levels, unison like that. I actually put the pluck on just for good measure. I did the same thing with the low pass, but it goes whoop and it goes down. So it goes like a it's like a it opens up whoop and then it closes. Let me exaggerate it. You don't want it too long because it sounds weird um, playing with your song. Let me, let me try to... Sounds alright. I still have to tighten everything up. Um, do anything else? Yeah, I kind of wanted to pluck there just to kind of make it sound like a bass. <laughs> And with this bass, to get achieve like basic funkiness, um, you just have your riff going or whatever. You just go an octave up, or whatever. That sounds like it's funky for some reason. I don't know why. I really need to. I had an electric guitar sample thing going, or what, or whatever, um, but I didn't. It didn't fit with the rest of the song, so I took it out. And I, it wasn't me playing it either. It was just like it was actually a televisor song, like one of their things. But yeah, funky guitar pluckiness things are obviously funky. Um, now this sounds interesting over here. It's not like the main thing of the song, but it adds just a little bit of something. So the frequency is kind of doing that. It's kind of doing the same thing, or it's like this one's going up a little bit and going down. Uh, unison's like that. Um, but oh, the pitch, pitch is going. Start from the top. Now we're here. What? Messing with the pitch is fun. Oh, the resonance is going crazy. I'll just leave it there. But, um, the main thing that gives it its, uh, texture, where is it? You're the bass. The so main thing that gives it its texture as the bit crusher. I take it. I took it down seven, uh, seven times on the down sampling. Um, sometimes you have to find like a better spot. You could do that. Nah, seven's fine. Just adds like a little like arcade feel. It's adding any like a big crusher on anything really just gives it like a obviously big crushed <laughs> and I don't know gives it funkiness gives it like something get kind of like put your mind in their people's minds in the, back in the day or something you know what I mean like what are they using or shit like that I don't know that's what Savant said so I don't know I try to use like shitty make things shittier with the big crusher because technology was shitty back then. I don't know. That's what I figured. Um, but I put reverb, the reverb underneath the big crusher. I don't know if that made any difference. I'm just kind of EQing stuff out and in. Uh, okay. That was that. And this one's this. I 
This one's actually in um, citrus, and it's the same thing, but this is a, a sine wave that's being pushed up. It almost sounds like a square wave. This is just a square. Um, and they're going in the filters, and they're going, it's all low pass, and they're going up, and then they're going in the middle, and for both. So, kind of have to mess with the resonance. And one of the original. And the, the cutoff knob right there, maybe the envelope sometimes. Maybe mess with the wave shaper within the filters. It kind of sounds like a future bassy stuff. And um, it's, <laughs> speaking to words, <laughs> uh, operator two is going into one just a little bit, just to add little fun times. I might keep that wave shaper on there. This is just the sine wave thing and added extra harmonics and I put a bunch of reverb on it. End of story. And this is the same thing as before, but it's going up and, and going meeting somewhere. You gotta find the point where it ends. You gotta mess with that so it sound get your full sound optimized, whatever that means. I'll shut up. Um this one's kind of the same. It's just like a sine wave. It's always like a square or a sine with these like these little funky things. And um, I'm messing with like the filter uh, negative and 100%. I think it... I don't know. I think it inverts it when you do it positive and 100%. And negative 100%. I don't know. But I just kind of messed with some stuff. And did things. This is triangle wave. Messed with the phase of it. Detuned it a little bit. And it's going into... Here. And just compressing it with OTT. Bring out, bring out that bite. This is the thing where I did my auto tune on. <laughs> Let me see. Right, this chord stack is obviously the same chords as up top over here, um, but I added an extra note on top of everything, so it's extra sparkly. And I always turn on both sides, and I always have one with a bunch of voices, and it's kind of, the pitch is like all over the place. And the phase, I turn the phase all the way up, and then I think it's f on full blur mode, It all the phases, or all the starting points of each voice are just random, I guess? I don't know, so it's like, sounds like it's more blurry and more uh, phasey and all over, like, it's like a wall of sound. And for my side B, I always do like, sometimes I do it sharper, but it's whatever, whatever I feel like doing, but it's like phase like in the middle and pans like right by here. So I always get like something f fuzzy and panning around you and f crazy and something sharper and more controlled. And that's usually what I do with, with my chord stacks. And I just did kind of the same thing, mess with it. And I put a chorus on this one. And of course, you got to compress all of it. And, and I made two of those, two of the same thing, and put it in here. 
boosting the highs a little bit, and Valhalla Room. Not too much, though. But I think that's it. Um, let me know if you have any questions about this. Uh, this is a song, this song or this idea is going to be on my EP, I think. I don't know. It depends how cool it is. I also do this little melodic thing. Here. <laughs> all my usual stuff but a little bit more funky yeah funky anyway <laughs> uh so thanks for watching guys i will try to make try to finish the drum and bass liquid drum and bass today um and just keep in mind what you want next for the next track from scratch just keep like come up with them some uh, cool genre that no one's heard before ever <laughs> i want to do like new tone one time that'd be hilarious Y'all know what new tone is? Frank Jepsey did something with that. So we're gonna make everything really fit. All right, we'll just dis discuss it later. All right, sorry. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe forever, and give me all your money. Bye. I'm just.